And so tonight, you know, as always, we want this to be very open and interactive, and that's why we have our little chair. Our Gangaji calls it the hot seat, but I don't think we'll call it the hot seat. Let's call it something else. The love seat. The love seat. And it's not, I'm, it's not hot at all. It's very comfortable up here. And we like to, the sun's going down so we can do a little eye gazing too. So, yeah, we just open it up. We're into the practical. I think it was the word practical that prompted me. Um, it actually came up to me yesterday during your talk in the afternoon. I'm not sure why I feel nervous. Stage fright. <laughs> <laughs> I was feeling much calmer yesterday playing all by myself <laughs> up here. Anyway, it's 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 a funny question. What should I do with my CDs? <laughs> <laughs> It, what it's based on is the whole just giving all to all uh, idea. And my, I guess if there's a, in the world of form an issue is, uh, you know, I borrowed this money from my mom to have these CDs duplicated and made into these things. So there's an expectation that I need to pay her back. Um, after yesterday's talk, I was ready to just to go around the circle in the little pit and just hand them out and just let them go. You know, let them go, kind of thing. And then, of course, I go, well, what do I tell my mom? You know, yeah. How are the sales going? You know, they're, they're gone. They're gone. <laughs> it's all gone. So, you know, <laughs> so, you know, then maybe some miracle will happen. Well, she'll just say, well, that's fine. That's okay. You know, and they kind of, well, that, that could be a possibility. And then another one would be where, well, you know, I'll just jump back into the truck and, you know, start making a paycheck again and I'll just pay her back that way. What do I do? Okay, that's a real direct practical question. Well, I remember with Mahatma Gandhi, I always liked to follow Gandhi along in, in the movies and his autobiography and everything, and he was always making experiments with truth. And I think a lot of us have this feeling we want to just give from our heart, you know, really learn how to do that. And we want to learn that giving and receiving are the same, so we can just give, 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 and receive, 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 and, and happily go our way without concerns and worries. And what I find with the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit is so practical that it's like that's the direction and where this is all heading, give all to all. And the practicalities of it is that we, we have to be shown, we have to experience that divine providence, that, that joy passing through us, and so in my case, in my parable of life journeys, at the beginning when I was guided to just open my heart to, to Jesus and the Holy Spirit, I was, I did work different jobs um, to pay off loans that I had taken out, it didn't matter whether it's, you know, to your mother or to a government loan or you know, paying bills, paying the rent, and so on. The Spirit is so practical in the sense that when you really open up to feel it in your heart, it's moving towards a sense of, of pure giving, and yet the Spirit helps us unwind from the world one turn at a time. And that's where we can really feel it out. Um, when I first started traveling around the United States and Canada, you know, I just would go where I was invited, where I was called to go, invitations came in, and just show up and trust, and just accept donations of whatever, food or gasoline for the car or whatever, and just show up and shine and share and speak and be spoken through. And that was good practice at seeing how things were working and coming out. And, you know, if you're unwinding from the self-concept and you have a partner, you have children, you have people you borrow money from and everything, that's how practical the spirit is. It's just really tuning in and practicing with experimenting with that and 
and learning from the experiences that come with that. So that you come into it from an experiential basis, not from a should or not to or I'm going to try to be spiritual or do the right spiritual thing and all those things. Because there's going to be a lot of guilt still associated with that. And you want the experiment to show you the way and bit by bit, piece by piece, miracle by miracle, start to have a demonstration of, of that. So, you know, I know uh, early on, we, uh, Armel and I were having a conversation with Greg, and Greg was sharing the, the same thing. He said, I think I'm going to have some CDs shipped here, and I'm wanting to offer some up on donation, and, and take some back to Australia to really have an impressed here in the United States and UPS out here, but it's just sometimes it can even be a combination of things mm -hmm. where you test it out a little bit with so many and notice what comes. Right. Yeah, you, you practice and you, you work with it that mm -hmm. way. Yeah. And then when you have really helpful mind opening and heart expanding experiences, that builds your confidence. And then you can go mm -hmm. forth without a sense of sacrifice or loss mm. or concerns and that's what we want to live we want to live, live a life that's free of concerns mm. just totally immersed in it yeah and the friend I was joining with this afternoon was um, just really looking at the idea also that keeping believing that he has to be the one in charge of everything was like a barrier to receive what people wanted to offer to him and so it's interesting also to look at that and, and see that truly uh, in accepting our true worth and really knowing that we are we worthy of receiving everything is opening up to both ways. I want to give and if someone wants to give to me, I can also say yes. Mm -hmm. And so let life do its job instead of wanting me to be the one in charge of, of the Spirit's job. How wonderful that is, sharing and extending and how for us it, it just, it's huge. It takes on a huge meaning, a huge experience. Yeah, I, um, I've been looking at a lot at that since the talk, giving it all to all, because I feel like it's been the calling of my heart since so many years, even before being in the Course. Um, I seem to to be a therapist back then in Belgium, and at some point I I couldn't even do my job because it felt like it was all about all about money somewhere, and I lost I lost the the joy really of doing what I was doing and joining with people and giving. And, and I could feel like the only thing that was really attractive to me in keeping doing what I was doing was the idea of just allowing people to give me whatever they want and not having any price anymore, not asking for any mm -hmm. specific amount, but just let them give whatever they could, whatever they wanted, even if it was a, um, a vegetable or, <laughs> or whatever, mm -hmm. just, um, yeah, just, just really letting life pick, it, pick actually for me and not trying to direct the way it was supposed to be. And yeah, earlier we were talking about this idea again that some have resources, some don't have resources, some have skills, some have a uh, huge desire for, um, for, for awakening and for coming together. And we've been looking in, in the, at the Extension Center in Hawaii of uh, creating a scholarship fund. And I feel like it's really based on this idea that that some really want to go deeper in this path but don't have the mean, but there's such a deep devotion in the heart and such a strong willingness. And, and I feel like really it is about accepting our true worth and accepting that everything can be given us when our heart is at the right place. And so I... I just really feel that there's something really powerful about that, about joining all of us in the same purpose and sharing whatever we, whatever we have, however it looks like, uh, a skill, um, a drive, um, a car, or a, a house, um, 
money, a meal, whatever it is, but just really coming in the spirit of true sharing and really coming to this experience actually where it is impossible really that they would be mine and they, they would be yours and that everything can only be ours because if we share the same mind, how can it have, how can it be any separation in between all of it? So that's kind of the idea that we're exploring this afternoon. <laughs> we're not joking when we say that we're talking about the call all the time. <laughs>